Hey, it's your friend Choi CJ here, and I'm bringing you guys week 8 of UBC season number 6. Uh, I just tried sort of recording this uh, battle in Team Builder, but it, I was going way too slow. So here I am starting again, and I'm wasting more time by telling you about it. Uh, we are 2 and 5. We are going up against our good buddies uh, Zamcrow, aka Scoot, and he is kind of in the same boat as us. Not having fantastic seasons, but I know the caliber of player that Scoot is. He's uh, made a lot of noise in uh, previous UBC seasons, especially Season 4. He had a really scary team with, like, Victini, Zapdos, Gyarados. Um, and uh, he did really well that season. I think he got second place in the regular season before getting knocked out uh, in playoffs. But he's been in uh, other leagues like CPC Minors, UPC, UPC Minors, uh, uh, NPL, National Pokemon League with Sheer Force. Um, he's been in, uh, like, WP, WBF, I think is what it's called, WBF. Um, so anyway, he's all over the place, and, um, he's, uh, you know, definitely a high-caliber player. He's just a little down on his luck this season. He's got a couple of hacks he losses, so, uh, you know, what can you do about it? But, uh, anyway, his team is Manaphy, Omega Charizard X, Fortress, Decidueye, Togekiss, Necrozma, Scolipede, Licky Licky, Hitmonlee, and Stunfisk. So... <coughs> The, uh, all the setup shenanigans on his team are just outrageous. I really am not sure, like, I, I wasn't sure going into the battle how I was going to deal with it. Like, Manaphy in particular, he can run Z Rain Dance pretty easily because he only needs water and ice coverage versus my team. Um, my only uh, water resists are Cloyster and Whimsicott. And Whimsicott obviously gets blown back by Ice Beam. Um, and if he uh, wants to, you know, hit, hit my Cloyster, all he really needs to do is boost to plus three. And I think Cloyster really pretty much like dies after rocks. And if he's able to get a rain dance to boost the surf even further, like I have no chance of living with my Cloyster. It's really, really sad. Um, so that's a huge issue. Charizard's a huge issue. I just don't have resistance to his dual coverage. And you know, admittedly, most teams don't if they don't have like a Tapu Fini or an Azumarill or something of that nature. Um, but it's just really hard to <laughs> deal with Zard. Uh, Skullpeed as well is a big threat, just because uh, my main checks to it, mainly like Scizor first of all, and Sciz uh, Steel Steelix kind of is a check for Skullpeed. It probably can't take a plus two Tech Rage or a plus two Hydro Vortex, but um, you know, I digress. Um, I can't really bring either of those two Mons because they're fodder for Manaphy and Zard. So puts me in a really, really bad position uh, dealing with his setup threats. So we've tried to build a team that's uh, able to deal with some of those options while still you know working its way through some of the fat that he has like uh licky licky and necrozma togekiss uh decidueye etc the Krasma obviously is also a huge setup threat just because it has so many different uh variations of setup it can run but i think i have a, a set that's reasonably equipped to to deal with all variants of that so let's just hopefully quickly hop on into the team builder and i try i'll try not to take too long here uh, Yajibari Whimsicott for dealing with Manaphy. I think this is not too surprising here. Uh, enough speed for max speed Manaphy. Uh, the investment here allows us to live a plus three ice beam after rocks. We, of course, though, get blown back by Sub-Zero Slammer if he chooses to run that. But if I were him, like, uh, Z Rain Dance just makes so much more sense. It's way better. Um, but yeah, then I think after that, we just put the rest into special attack to try and do as much uh, damage to Manaphy as possible. Like, if he's a Calm Mind variant, then I'm a little bit more in trouble. Um, but I guess I can just Encore, you know, Calm Mind variants. Yeah, but Encore here is to, you know, prevent too much setup abuse. That's the one thing I've got going for me in this matchup, is I've got Whimsicott, which is really good for, uh, neutering setup. <coughs> Excuse me. Next up, we've got, uh, Spec Swallow. He does not have switches to Spec Swallow. Um, Decidueye would normally resist normal-type moves, but I have Scrappy, so I don't care. And then his, uh, only normal resist otherwise is uh, Fortress, which is probably to a KO by Boom Burst anyway, um, but just in case it's not, I do have Heat Wave to hit that thing. So, both of the moves together, really nice for dealing with his team. U-Turn just for momentum and uh, Tailwind for uh, potentially being cheeky and like boosting the speed of my uh, Pangoro or something like that, or my Zygarde. So, uh, next up we do have a Flame Orb Jolteon, and this is really cute because with Quick Feet we can easily outspeed uh, plus one Manaphy in the rain. I probably should have put T-Bolt on this set instead of bringing the set that I brought. Um, like I could have brought uh, HP Ice um, plus 
Thunderbolt and then dropped the HP Fire plus Thunder Wave. Thunder Wave just seemed really nice for me because, uh, you know, that way if I get caught with my Panth down in front of Zard or something like that, I can T-Wave it and prevent it from uh, completely destroying my team. But yeah, I could have done that, and then I could have dropped Synchronoise for, uh, like, I don't know, Volt Switch, T-Bolt, uh, HP Ice, and I guess T-Wave. Yeah, like, that, that would have worked, and then I just wouldn't have been able to hit Fortress as hard. That would have been the only problem. Um... But yeah, that, that's the point of this Jolteon set. It's really just to check, uh, really just to check, uh, uh, Mana Fee at plus one, and then potentially catch things like Scolipede or Zard if they're trying to set up versus me with Thunder Wave. So, that's the plan there. We got a Banded Pangoro with our next slot, and, uh, yeah, this thing is just great for breaking through most of his fat, um, Necrozma and Licky Licky mainly. But then even something like uh, Stunfist doesn't really appreciate switching into this. Uh, the nice thing about Pangoro versus something like Necrozma is that we do have Mold Breaker, so his Prism Armor is negated, so he should be taking full damage from our knockoffs, assuming he doesn't have Culper Berry. Um, and then Parting Shot, you know, obviously it's just a really useful momentum uh, move. Between these first four mods, we all have some way of pivoting out, so that's quite nice. <coughs> uh, we have enough speed on here, I think, for a uninvested Togekiss. Let's quickly look at this. Um, yep, yeah, so just enough for Uninvested Togekiss, and we've got, you know, plenty of speed Decidui, potentially, so that's the thinking there. And then we have, like, our, I guess what I would say, our two win conditions this week. Uh, first is uh, a sort of cancerous Reuniclus set, uh, Acid Armor Toxic. Uh, he doesn't have a Dark Resist on his team, so I can slowly whittle down things uh, on his team with a combination of Toxic plus uh, Psychic. So, like, Fortress, even though it's immune to Toxic, uh, it's not a threat to us, period, but with Acid Armor, it's especially not a threat. Um, so we can, uh, boost up and then slowly take that thing down with Psychic. And then versus Necrozma, um, unless he's, like, a SD knockoff, uh, or, like, a SD, uh, yeah, I guess even SD sets, like, we can, we can, uh, Calm Mind, or we can Acid Armor as fast as he can Sword Stance. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, and then we can Toxic it, and unless he's somehow packing Rest, which I don't think he can afford to do, on a setup and a crossman set this week, we should eventually beat him. Uh, if he's Calm Mind, I think that we should be able to uh, wear him down with Toxic before he can wear us down with Photon Geyser or whatever. Um, yeah, and then otherwise, just like getting uh, Acid Armor up allows me to live hits easily from Skullipede, you know, assuming it's not Life Orb, and uh, Charizard uh, if it's not boosted. And yeah, we can just sort of stall our way to victory. So. Uh, you know, not the best, uh, like, you know, most friendly, like, uh, you know, not not the best set for, like, friendly competition. But, yeah, I guess it's a little bit of, like, a try-hard set. Uh, but it should be hard to beat. Uh, and then last but not least, we have a Zygarde. Uh, with Sub DD, Thousand Arrows, and Crunch. Uh, the Sub and Dragon Dance, like, I don't necessarily anticipate setting up with this Mon. Uh, but... I didn't really see the need for much more coverage. Like, I could have been... I, I was thinking about bringing a cheeky set um, with, like, a minus speed nature and um, packing HP fire to hit uh, Fortress. But if we're boosting with Dragon Dance, Thousand Arrows should be doing a lot anyway. So it didn't really seem worth it. And then the only other thing that he has to, like, potentially take a, a, a ground hit is Decidueye, and so that's why we have Crunch. But mainly, I just want this thing here to take a hit from a plus one Zard. Um, and that's why we have the Haban Berry, just because <coughs> other otherwise we get 6 0 by Zard. Uh, no stop. So, that is the team. Let's quickly flash on over to the battle. Uh, right. So, Scoot has brought his Manaphy, his Charizard X, his Decidueye, Necrozma, Scolipede, and Stunfisk. So, seeing the triple setup mons, or quadruple setup mons if you count Necrozma as well, is really, really scary for me. Uh, Manaphy in particular is really scary. I, I think I mentioned this in the team builder, but Z Rain Dance sets uh, just are, are so good versus me with just Surf and Ice Beam. So I'm kind of scared of that. And then Zard, if he gets a chance to set up, uh, could really plow through my team. And then other mons that he brought, like the Situai, make a lot of sense. It's a good response to, uh, to uh, my Zygarde. It's his only ground resist. So weakening that thing could be very nice. And then Stunfisk makes sense because it's uh, going to prevent some shenanigans by my Jolteon, like Volt switching on his entire team. 
Uh, not that Volt Switch like does a ton of damage by itself. It's just uh, you know the momentum that's obviously very nice and uh, can be very annoying for him. So in terms of leads, uh, there's not a really great lead here. Like I think maybe you could lead with like like leading with Whimsicott or something. I guess you could do, but the problem is that it's scared out by Zard, Scolipede, uh, things like that. Whereas it's decent versus like Manaphy, Decidueye, uh, Stunfisk. So, but I think, you know, like if you look at Skolopi, that's a pretty probable lead. Um, so it's just not that great. And then if he does lead Skolopi, you know, that doesn't mean, or that means that things like Reuniclus don't do well. Zygarde, I don't want to lead because I want to preserve that thing's HP for Zard. And uh, Jolteon, like its momentum just could be stopped too easily. And uh, it has to, you know, pretty much give free turns to things like Zard. So, like, all things being said, I think Swellow sort of makes the most sense. Or it's, like, the least bad of all the options that I have, if that makes sense. So, we will lead with that. And holy crap, I forgot to turn off music. <laughs> Alright, let's start again. Um, luckily, you guys don't hear that because I don't record the desktop audio. But um, my ears are bleeding now. So, um, he leads with Skullpede. And so, uh, leading, him leading with Skullpede actually kind of puts me in an awkward spot. Like, I'm really lamenting not bringing Scizor this week. But Scizor, again, it was just such a bad Mon versus Manaphy and Charizard. I don't know how I could realistically have brought it. Um, but, you know, he the, the crappy thing about this position is that he can, in, in theory, just go for Protect <coughs> and um, then outspeed my Swellow on the following turn. Um, but I can't really switch out. Just on the off chance he goes for a setup move or something. Like, I guess it'd be pretty bold for him to go for a setup move. Um, in the face of a Swellow. But, I mean, if he's, like, Focus Sash, uh, like, look at plus two Skolopi, then look at my team. Like, I just don't have an answer. <laughs> so, like, he could easily survive the hit, of course, with the Focus Sash, and then pretty much sweep my team. So, I think the only thing I could do reasonably is uh, go for the Boom Burst, and uh, that is what I do. Luckily, he doesn't have Protect. He does have the Focus Sash, and so I'm praying he doesn't SD, and he just goes for a Poison Jab, and so does not take out my Swellow. Uh, so here, again, not wanting him to get a free turn, I want to click Boom Burst again, and then I can follow up by going probably into Pangoro. Pangoro is sort of the only thing that can tank one uh, Mega Horn slash Poison Jab on my team, which is really scary. Like, I just did not do a good job of prepping for this thing. Um, but so I will follow up with the Boom Burst, intending to sack my Swellow. Um, but he's going to make an interesting play. He's actually going to switch on out of here. Going into his stun fist, which takes a pretty decent chunk from this uh, boom burst. So, in talking with him after the match, he was really afraid of Scarf, which is kind of odd, uh, I guess. But uh, you know, I, I guess maybe it, may, it made sense in his head. Um, but I think if he had done the calcs, I don't think a, a Scarf boom burst necessarily kills a Scolipede. Um, so, with him thinking that, that's going to sort of change the dynamic of this match for a little bit. Uh, but I do get off a hit on the uh, on the Stunfisk. It's probable that he's just going to go for rocks here, but my Swellow is still nice for uh, basically not not uh, literally revenge killing anything on his team, but like like uh, from 100%. But like if pretty much anything on his team gets to like 70% or lower, I can I can one shot it with a boom burst. So even if he gets up rocks, I can break Swellow in once and uh, and do some crazy damage. So uh, I am going to pivot on the Whimsicott. Sorry. I'm going to pivot into Reuniclus because uh, Sunfix doesn't really threaten me at all. And I have the opportunity here to go for um, an Acid Armor because then he doesn't... <coughs> it kind of forces in his Mana Fee, right? Because, like, you look at his team. It's He's got Charizard, Decidueye. Um, he's got Scolipede, all his physical attackers. The Crossman doesn't threaten me at all. Um, and then Stunfisk sitting here in front of me doesn't threaten me at all either. Um, but Manaphy, if he can start getting up Tail Glows, is going to be his quickest way to dealing with Manaphy. And so that's exactly what he does as I go for a Toxic on his switch out. Um, and then, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to scout if he's got Rain Dance or not. Like, you know, I think that that's the most likely set. And so I am going to go into my Whimsicott uh, expecting that, and then I can uh, threaten the Encore. So we do switch, bring in the Whimsicott. And uh, as you do see, he goes exactly for Rain Dance. So uh, I'm going to click Encore on this turn, even though I guess it's pretty obvious. Um, just because I, I, you know, 
I don't want him to stay in and click Ice Beam or something like that and get a tremendous amount of damage off on me. Even though he's not boosted, he'll still do like 30-ish percent or so, which is not that great. So he makes a smart play going into Decidueye as I Encore. And I can U-turn here. And uh, I decided to U-turn into Pangoro just because I, my options are pretty limited for switching into a uh, Spirit Shackle. And, you know, this is my, my, this is my Ghost Resist. And, um, yeah, nothing else really wants to take that at all. I guess Swellow, you could switch it in on, on that. But he makes a smart play and goes for the U-turn. And he brings in his, uh, Skullpeed again. So, <coughs> this is actually, like, best case scenario for me because, uh, even a max attack Megahorn can't kill me. So he can go for that move and, uh, I can take him out with knockoff. Or if he wants to, like, go for something else like Endeavor or Spikes or whatever... I'll be able to take him out immediately afterwards. Um, he instead goes for X Scissor, and X Scissor actually crits, um, but luckily the crit is not strong enough to uh, take out my Pangoro from the range of HP that I was at. So very, very lucky there. It could be, could have definitely been a lot worse. But we do take out this Golipede, and that was definitely looking like one of the biggest threats to my team. So now he can bring in Charizard, and again, I don't want to allow free turns, so I'm just going to sack my Pangoro here. It um. Yeah, I, like, clicking knockoff versus Skullipede, I think, still was the right play. Like, uh, I couldn't really go for superpower, because I would go for that, I would, uh, then receive the attack and defense drops, uh, going for that. Th the reason I'm, like, starting to, like, think about this play is because knockoff is obviously weaker versus Charizard, since it doesn't have a Z-Crystal. But, uh, superpower from minus one versus this Charizard, I think, would be basically the same. So, anyway, we go ahead and we sack that thing. And uh, this Zard is looking really scary. Like, I don't have anything that can uh, sort of uh, revenge kill it here. You know, it is at pretty much max HP. My Zygarde actually needs a little bit of chip damage on the Zard before it can kill with Thousand Arrows. If I was packing something like Outrage, I would be in better shape, but I don't have Outrage this week. Uh, I guess I don't usually pack Outrage unless I'm packing a Z-Crystal. Um, and I'm not. I am packing Haban Berry. But, so my Swellow kind of gives me the best chance... <coughs> to revenge kill this thing uh, just by clicking boom burst and um, if you decides to to stay in and take the boom burst he's actually got a chance to live so I wouldn't blame him for that but then I could follow up going into pretty much anything like Jolteon, Zygarde, whatever I want to go into, Whimsicott as well um, but he decides just to go into his Stunfisk and uh, we are going to be able to easily to a KO this thing with boom burst which is very very nice and so uh, getting rid of his uh, electric immunity here is, is good for Jolteon. It just makes it very annoying versus him. So that might come into play later. Now he goes into his Decidueye. Uh, I don't have a switch into this thing anyway. So um, I, I feel like I have to stay in here. But that's actually not bad for me because it does get rid of his only uh, ground resist. So we'll stay in here. We'll fire off some boom bursts. It looks like he's max HP but doesn't look like he has much uh, death investment. And so yeah, we're just going to stay in here until... Uh, we eventually kill with Boom Burst, or he kills us. Um, so he does go for the U-turn here, and that allows him to bring in his Charizard once again. And so we're kind of in the same situation we were like three or four turns ago. Um, I brought in the Swellow on the Charizard after the Charizard got a kill. Um, and then I brought that in to, you know, kind of like f uh, force it out. Um, but now I don't have anything to force it out. And uh, again, my, Zy my uh, Zygarde doesn't kill it with thousand arrows from this range so i feel like i have to go into whimsicott go for a moon blast to get a little bit of chip damage and you know it ends up going down to the flare blitz very very easily um and now i can go into my zygarde and uh i can kill this thing um so that's what i set up to do but i make kind of a miss a misplay here uh so this art is like the biggest threat to my team right now and uh, i can easily live the dragon claw because of my haban berry but what I choose to do, <coughs> instead of sniping this Zard, is I actually click Dragon Dance. And, you know, like, in my head, <coughs> like, if he wanted to go for a Dragon Dance versus me, like, there, there's no good reason for him to go for Dragon Dance here, right? But in case he somehow wanted to do that, I could set up alongside him. And then on the following turn, he still wouldn't be able to knock me out with Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw would only do about 60%. Um, so I would then snipe off his Zard, and I would be at plus one, uh, which is nice. But as it is, uh, he hits me. I now outspeed him. 
but there's nothing stopping him from switching out. <laughs> um, so he's got a very, very safe play, sacking off his uh, Decidueye here. And, uh, and then he can go into either Necrozma or Manaphy, but both of which can easily, easily take a plus one hit from Zygarde. I go for a substitute just in case this uh, Mon doesn't have a good way to hit me. Uh, like, you know, if he wants to go for Toxic or something like that. If he went for Toxic, I would have two turns to hit him with Crunch. Which, as you can see, still wouldn't do tremendous damage. He would only be at, like, 40% after all that. Um, so I do just go for the Crunch as he goes for the HP Ice. And takes out my uh, Zygarde very easily. So, that was a pretty bad misplay on my part. Just because him, you know, uh, being forced to sack the Decidueye means that he still has his Zard around. And I don't have a really good way to deal with Zard. From the range of HP that it's at. I'd have to get a boost with Reuniclus somehow, um, but again, Reuniclus can be dealt with by Tailglow of Manaphy. So, really, really put myself into a crappy position uh, right here. I'm down two months to three. Uh, I can go into my Reuniclus because Necrozma just does not threaten it whatsoever, and we have to, you know, try and make a, a prediction here, I guess. Like, is he gonna go into Manaphy, you know, anticipating my Acid Armor or my Toxic? Is he going to go into Zard? Uh, is he going to stay in here? What is he going to do? Uh, I think I ultimately end up uh, predicting the Manaphy to switch in, and I just go straight for a Psychic. Uh, yeah, so we get off a decent bit of damage there. Two more Psychics does take him out, which is really nice. And then here, there's really nothing stopping him for going for, uh, for a setup move. So I'm going to hard switch out into my Jolteon, anticipating the setup move. And uh, he does go for the Z Rain Dance, as you can see. And so, uh, this allows me to get my Flame Orb to proc, and I can now outspeed this Manaphy. And I can kill it with Volt Switch. So he's going to feel pressured to switch out of here. <coughs> and the fact that he has Rain Up is actually really nice for me, because it weakens the Flare Blitz from his Zard, which is otherwise his best move to hit Reuniclus right now. So I have a few turns where Reuniclus can... Um, potentially set up versus some stuff. Um, I just have to be careful because uh, a plus three Surf in the rain can one-shot Manaphy, or, or uh, not Manaphy, uh, Reuniclus, or it can nearly one-shot. So he is going to be making his switch. He goes into his Necrozma, and uh, we can get up a decent amount of damage on this thing, 32%. You know, that's what Modest Jolteon does for you. And uh, then we can bring in our Reuniclus, and we're sort of in the same position that we were a moment ago. Like, do we anticipate the switch out into Zard or Manaphy? Or do we think that he's going to stay in with a Necrozma? If you think he's going to stay in, then going for Toxic makes sense. We can start willing this thing down. Um, but if he wants to switch out, then I think Psychic is the best play. Um, so I do go for Psychic. And, uh, you know, so going for Psychic as well, even if he stays in, there's not a lot of consequences to that, um, in my opinion. So I do just go for the Psychic. Um, and he stays in with his Necrozma. So I go, okay, so he seems to be willing to go to battle with his Necrozma here. Now I'm going to go for the Toxic on this thing. Or, um, no, that's not true. I, uh, I say, okay, this Necrozma can't threaten me. He seems to want to stay in with it. I can go for Acid Armor and set myself up to deal with Zard once this rain expires. Um, so I do go for the Acid Armor and the Manaphy comes out. So, uh, two turns in a row doesn't really work out for me. The first turn, consequences were relatively little. This turn, consequences are pretty high. And so, uh, I'm in a tricky spot because... If I go into Jolteon and he clicks Surf, uh, Surf should straight up kill Jolteon. And then that means I've got no way of revenge killing this uh, this Manaphy. And I'm in a really, really bad spot. Um, but if he stays in here and I and he tail glows, like I am in kind of a bad spot because he can then do tremendous damage to my Reuniclus. And Reuniclus is my way to win this game right now. It's, it's uh, the Mon that can beat Necrozma and Zard. Um, so one thing in the in the battle that I didn't realize is that rain was going to be expiring after this next turn. So he does go for the tail glow as I go for a psychic, and um, we are able to get up to 96% HP. The rain expires, and without the rain, he actually cannot do that much damage to Reuniclus with a uh, with a plus three uh, surf. Um, and it you know even better for me, he goes just for scald and not for surf. So the damage is a bit reduced. I take only about 50% from that. And uh, we're going to be able to to finish him off with a psychic. So that's looking extremely nice. Um, I like I, I even typed GG in the chat. I thought I had totally lost here, uh, but the damage was was uh, way less than I expected. And so because I'm already at plus two, 
Um, he can only do about 33% damage to me with his Zard uh, if he goes for Flare Blitz. So I can recover up, get up to a decent amount of HP, <coughs> <coughs> eventually get off a Toxic or get up another Acid Armor, and it should be GG at that point. And so I will just hit the normal speed here. He goes for Roost on his first turn. And, um, you know, I don't know if that was necessarily the the right play or not, but it doesn't really make a difference because now I can just go for Acid Armor. I'm at plus three, and so unless he crits, uh, I don't think there's a way for him to, to defeat us. And uh, he's going to realize that in just a little bit. He's going to, you know, continue to go to for, for Flare Blizzards, try and get off a little bit more damage versus us. And um, he does eventually just forfeit, so... It's going to be a 2-0 victory for us versus Scoot, a.k.a. Zamcrow, or I get that backwards all the time. It's Zamcrow, a.k.a. Scoot. So, um, GG to him. Uh, you know, I feel bad having just sort of like this uh, Toxic Sol strategy on my Reuniclus, but it was very good versus his team. Uh, it was just a matter of getting that Mana Fee out of the way. And I didn't expect to be, uh, Reuniclus to be the one to get rid of the Mana Fee, um, but, you know, that really just worked out for me. So that brings us to 3-5. and five on the season, which is pretty nice. Uh, three game winning streak after starting off with the five game losing streak. And uh, yeah, like I still think playoffs are out of reach, but uh, hopefully we can continue to play well and at least get to a 500 record. That would be really fantastic. So uh, not gonna take, take up any more of your guys' time. This video is already going up a little bit late, uh, but uh, I will get it up ASAP and uh, I do hope that you guys enjoyed it. And I hope that you'll check back to the channel for other gaming and Pokemon content. So until the next time, I'll see you guys later.